I'm super excited to be filming this video because I just got a box in the mail which I'm super excited to unbox for you guys. So the story behind this is that the other day I got a message from a friend of mine with a link in it to a company called The Book Grocer. So this is an Australian company, kind of like book outlet, so they specialize in cheap retail books and secondhand books. Anyway, they were doing a warehouse clearance and they were offering you a box of 40 books for $100, which is the equivalent of roughly $3 per book. I'm not 100% sure what the exchange rate is exactly at the moment, but you're probably looking at like 90p per book or something like that. So I'm super excited about this and I wanted to share the experience of unboxing this box with you guys. I have no idea what's inside. So we are going to find out together. So here's the box. As you can see, I have not undone it yet. And as you can also see, my cat is very curious to know what's going on. So let's get it open. So I have no idea what's in this box. It is just a bunch of books that they're getting rid of. So just trying to think of the best way to do this. I might show you me opening it. <gasps> okay, so of course we have some packing, order form. Ooh. Okay. And there's Peanut behind me. Hello, Peanut. So Shade was the one looking around to see what was going on. Peanut is the one just there. Okay, so like I said, I have no idea what's in here. There are 40 books, I know that much, which is probably gonna take a while if I give you guys the whole synopsis on the back and everything. So what I might do, so if I know something about the book, I will let you know what I know. If I don't know anything about the book, I will see if I can get kind of an inkling from the back of the book or what's on the front and then I'll let you guys know. So let's pull out the first one that I see, which is something I actually know something about, which is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini. So this is by the person that wrote A Thousand, uh, sorry, The Kite Runner. Um, it is a book based in Afghanistan. Taliban take over. Okay. Um, so it sounds really interesting. It sounds like sounds like it's a bit of a kind of literary fiction um, to do with difficult life when a not great regime takes over your country and personal triumph and all of that sort of thing. So I'm super excited about this one. Yeah, so that's the first one. Okay, next one is Dare to Be You by Dr. Celia DeFellis. Eight Steps to Transforming Your Life. So it's kind of a self-help book. I'm not a huge fan of self-help books, not because I have a problem with self-help books or the notion of people using self-help books. If those are the sorts of things that help you, go right ahead. But I've not come across any in particular that uh, have been super helpful, but that's not to say that I won't find this useful. Of course, I can always give some of these away or presents or what have you. So there's that one. Think You Know It All by Dan Smith, the activity book for grown-ups. Do you think you could name all of the seven dwarves? Could you identify all of Shakespeare's plays? If you think you know it all, this activity, activity book will put your wits and your memory to the test. Oh, the three Bronte women, Anne, Charlotte and Emily, wrote a total of eight novels between them. Can you A, give the pen name of each sister and B, the names of each of their novels? I actually don't know if I can. Wow. I think this would be quite fun for games parties and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. All right. The Bone Bed by Patricia Cornwell. So Cornwell, I should say. I've never read any Patricia Cornwell, but I have heard a lot about her. So she is a crime fiction writer. Okay, so it sounds like it is in a series by about a woman called Kay Scarpetta, series of murders and disappearances. So sounds pretty interesting. I do like me a good crime novel. The next one I saw was 
Rat King by Michael Dibden. And it says an Inspector Zen mystery. So it looks like another mystery. So I think that it was contemporary at its time, but it was written in the 40s. So, but yeah, it's a mystery set in like the 40s to do with a wealthy industrialist. So that sounds pretty cool as well. All right, the next thing that I saw, Hack in a Flak Jacket by Peter Stefanovic. Oh, D Wars, Riots and Revolutions. Dispatches from a foreign correspondent. So it sounds like, oh wow, it's a bunch of different stories. So I think it's kind of a memoir about a um, foreign correspondent to one of the Australian TV networks. That would be really interesting, I think. Cool. So, so far we have one book I've actually heard of and one author, two authors I've heard of. So, but some interesting sounding books. Oh, another Patricia Cornwell, Post Mortem, and that's another Scarpetta novel. So, it's the same kind of thing. This is a murder mystery one, I think. Ooh, Bonus Aries, The Biography of a City by James Gardner. I'm going to read the back of this one to you because it sounds quite interesting. That a city as great and complex as Buenos Aires should have emerged out of nothing at the edge of the pampas is astounding enough. That it should have elected to recreate Europe in the New World over the demolished and repudiated remains of its own colonial past, something that no other city in the Western Hemisphere has ever attempted to do, makes it a prodigy among the world's urban centres. In this regard, one can only concur in the query attributed to Albert Einstein on his visit to the city in 1925. How did they manage to create out of nothing something that looks so much like Paris? The delirious process by which that evolution occurred is the grand theme of this book. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I know next to nothing about Brazil or Buenos Aires, so that'll be really interesting to read. Okay, ooh. <laughs> so this is Matt Lucas. Little Me, A Life from A to Z. So it's a memoir of Matt Lucas, who is a British comedian. So no doubt all my British booktuber friends will know who this guy is. But yeah, British comedian. He was in a variety of skit shows. I think he's probably done a lot of stand-up. Um, and he has been in a few movies with Rebel, William, Rebel, Rebel Wilson and other things as well. So that's pretty cool. Jennifer Weiner. Then Came You. I actually think I've seen this around a few, a few times lately. So it's a bit of a kind of chick lit, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on here. Looks quite interesting as well. Shit My Dad Says by Justin Halpern. If you're wondering if there is a real man behind the quotes on Twitter, the answer is a definite and laugh out loud yes. After being dumped by his longtime girlfriend, 28-year-old Justin Halpern finds himself living at home with his 73-year-old dad, Sam Hel Sam. I'll start again. <laughs> After being dumped by his longtime girlfriend, 28-year-old Justin Halpern finds himself living at home with his 73-year-old dad, Sam Halpern, who is like Socrates but angrier and with worse hair, has never minced his words, and when Justin moved back home, he began to record all the ridiculous things his dad said to him, from the pitfalls of family weddings to confronting burglars naked with a shotgun. Shit My Dad Says is a chaotic, hilarious, true memoir of a father and son's relationship from a major new comic voice. <laughs> that sounds quite cool as well. <laughs> Not Your Usual Bush Rangers by Peter McInnes. Okay, so this is a history book about a particular aspect of Australian history. Um, so a bush ranger is sort of like an Australian highwayman. Um, but it says, curiously, the word bush ranger did not originally mean an Australian highwayman, rather somebody capable of living in the bush. But were, li were the early bush rangers even capable of surviving in the bush? And what were their motivations for taking part in this deadly game? So, yeah, that could be quite interesting. Oh. From the Track by Barry and Alan Wood. More racing stories, including scams, scandals, ring-ins, and rogues. Horse racing history and trivia. I've never been remotely interested in that, but <laughs> you never know, it could be interesting. Poison Tree by Erin Kelly. So this looks like a thriller. Ooh, it says, evokes the brooding atmosphere of Rebecca, a contemporary and completely convincing novel of tangled family desires. Set in 1997. <laughs> which apparently is historical. <laughs> so 
So yeah, that sounds really cool. The Gangbuster by Peter Blixley, as seen on TV. So this is a crime, undercover crime um, story. So it sounds quite interesting as well. Not many books I've heard much of, but that's pretty cool. I like to find new things. The Management Masterclass. Management today, not just business as usual. Great business ideas without the hype by Emma DeVetta. Okay, so I have to admit this is not one that I'm going to be really interested in at all, but there's absolutely no reason why I can't offer these books around to people that might be keen. So if you happen to be watching this, initially I'm going to say I'd prefer if you lived in Australia because it'll be a lot cheaper to send to you, but if you're keen in a book, any of these books, particularly this one, please let me know in the comments and I can organise something for you. I'll Eat When I'm Dead by Barbara Borland. Rage Fashion Book is the world's most dynamic, ambitious magazine. Its editors, like Kat Ono, have the power to change minds and the market. They're savvy, sisterly and polished to perfection, even the one found dead in her office. Well, <laughs> I have no idea what else is going to happen, but I'm intrigued. Selkirk's Island by Diana Suami, set in 1704. Ooh, it says, this is the story of the original Robinson Crusoe. Selkirk's Island is a book that is a hypnotic and compelling as the island that, it, the island that forms its real subject. Great adventure story, a great read, and a real advance in the art of biography. Oh, that sounds really cool. It's quite little too, so be interesting, I think, and quite easy to get to from the sounds of it. Oh, a colouring book. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really lovely. I love a good colouring book, although I have to admit... I don't usually use them for myself. I tend to photocopy them and use them for when I'm doing relief teaching as a, um, if you finish your work, something to do activity. But I don't know, this is very pretty. I might keep this one for myself, actually. Arabella's Guide to Nutrient Dense Food on a Shoestring. Ooh, that looks cool. Mm. And it's another colouring book, but it's a little one. And it says, the little book of colouring into the deep piece in your pocket. <laughs> oh, and it's got some really nice little sayings in there. The life in us is like the water in the river by Den Henry David Thoreau. Next to these little fish. Home is a name, a word. It is a strong one. Stronger than magician ever. Stronger than magician ever spoke or spirit ever answered to in the strongest conjuration. I've dreamt in my life dreams that have stayed with me ever after and changed my ideas. They've gone through and through me like wine through water and altered the colour of my mind. That is cool. I like that too. In Times of Fading Light by Eugene Rouge. Look at the colour. I really like that. It's very simple but I love the little details around the side there. So this is a um, story of a family, sort of family life and relationships and all of that sort of thing set in East Germany. Looks pretty cool. Guys, I think we're only halfway through the box. Wow. Taking Flight, Laura Spenny's Extraordinary Flying Career by Kristen Alexander. It's a coffee table book. Interesting though, my, I think my dad would really like this one. Might consider giving this one to dad. Although it is very cool. <laughs> Bez, Freaky Dancing, Me and the Mondays. So it is about a musician in the Happy Mondays. So it's another memoir, which is cool. I don't have many memoirs, but I do quite enjoy them. So I'm glad to be getting a few. The Satoralist Closer. The Satoralist Closer, Scott Schumann. Oh, it's a book of photography and fashion. Again, not something I'm super interested in, but... It is very cool, um, so if anyone thinks they would like this, please let me know and I'll arrange to get it to you. A, another cooking book. A good food day. A day when feeling well and eating well go hand in hand. The Men Who Came Out of the Ground by Paul Cleary. 
So it is a story of the Australian involvement in the Second World War, but the Second World War between um, Japanese forces in New Guinea, which is not a particular part of history that I know very much about, so that's pretty cool. The Lakeshore Limited by Sue Miller. So it is a story about four different people um, and how their lives are kind of interconnected, but specifically around one of the characters' reaction to 9-11. Um, so sounds very interesting as well. So that is The Lakeshore Limited by Sue Miller. Coffee with Plato. <laughs> Donald R. Moore forwarded by Robert M. Bersig. <laughs> It's just a little book of Plato. That's cool. So it looks like what they've done is they've taken a bunch of Plato speeches from symposiums and stuff like that and they have imagined that they were interviewing him for like a magazine or whatever and they've created this little book. That's so cute. I really like that. That's cool. Filth by Irvin Welsh. So this is by the same author that wrote Train Spotting, which is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time and have never got around to. And I've never read anything else of his, but I'm very intrigued by anything he's written really, um, because I love the movie Train Spotting, so that's pretty exciting. The Killing School by Brandon Webb. Look at that cover, oh my god, it's kind of startling. Gritty behind the scenes look at what makes the modern sniper so lethally effective in combat. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. Wow. Gosh, some really interesting books in here, books I would never have thought to purchase on my own, so that's really, really cool. Bear Grylls, Burning Angels. Ooh. A prehistoric corpse entombed within an, Arctic within an Arctic glacier. Crying tears of blood. A jungle island overrun by rabid primates escapes from a research laboratory's hot zone. A massive seaplane hidden beneath a mountain packed with a Nazi cargo of mind-blowing evil. Wow, that sounds kind of insane, but probably really fun. It's not the kind of book I usually go for, to be honest, but hey, why not? Another one I think my dad would like, actually, so... I'm not saying I won't read it, but... Dad, if you want it... <laughs> Willa Cather, O Pioneers, that's a Penguin classic. 1913 tale of a pioneer woman who, t who tames the wild hostile lands of the prairie. Oh, that sounds really cool. John, John Crow's Devil by Marlon James. So it's the hottest name in Caribbean literature right now. I don't think I've ever read any Caribbean literature, so that is cool. Man Booker winning author, that's really cool. Reminiscent of Cormac McCarthy and Toni Morrison. That sounds really cool. I'm really, really intrigued by that. Awesome. Fit in Three by Fania. Sorry. <laughs> Fit in Three by Faya Nilsson. Definitely not my thing, but again, if anyone wants it, let me know. Tiger Woods, Unprecedented, The Masters and Me. Well, I mean, again, not something I would particularly buy by myself, but... Again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not unhappy about a memoir, so could be interesting. We're getting near the bottom now, guys. Gross Anatomy, My Curious Relationship with the Female Body by Mara Altman. Another kind of self-help book, but one of those ones that's sort of almost an anti-self-help book. Hey guys, Editing Mel here. I just wanted to jump in and say that my camera cut out. Normally I notice when that happens and so I don't miss much, but this time I didn't actually notice. Uh, so I talked for quite a while before I realized, but because normally I notice so quickly, I didn't then recap. Uh, so anyway, all I said basically was that I had seen this particular book somewhere on someone's channel before and I couldn't remember who it was and the other thing that I did say was that I find that kind of odd um, that there's a book like this which is obviously sort of anti the beauty myth and then there's a book like the three-in-one fitness how to lose weight book um, and also an indication that these boxes aren't curated at all so anyway just wanted to jump in and say that, and now back to the video. Ah, okay. So this is a story about Alec uh, Lightwood and Magnus Bain. Hmm. Well, there you go. Um, so 
if you've been around for a while, you'd know that Connor from Connor's Library Corner and I have been reading the Cassandra Clare books. We are currently, well, I'm currently halfway through Clockwork Prince. I believe Connor has actually finished it. What I thought about reading which books I wanted to read, do I want to read the novellas and everything, and I really hadn't thought that much about it, but now I have it, so there you go, Connor. Or well, one of them. <laughs> the Artist at War, Nick Cardi. I think this is. Yes. So this is a book of comic, comics and art that had been drawn by this guy, Nick Cardi, um, for newspapers and things like that, mostly to do with war. That's actually really cool. There you go. So at the bottom of my box now, guys, I have literally no way that I can hold these up <laughs> to show you them all. So I'm just going to wing the camera around. So there you go. That was my box of 40 books from the book grocer. And yeah, as you saw, some of them were books that I had heard of. Most of them were books I hadn't heard of. There are a few books that I'm probably really not that interested in, but a bunch of interesting sounding books that I probably wouldn't have bought myself. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that was fun and exciting. Are there any books that you were particularly interested in? I'll contact me and I'll look at trying to get that to you. Hey guys, just jumping in here because I actually got a package in the mail today which I really wanted to open for you guys on camera. Um, so I thought I would jump in and do that at the very end of this unboxing video. And I'm sitting here on the floor in front of this cat because I thought you'd all like to see how incredibly cute she is in her bean bag. It's one of her new favorite spots. So Peanut and I are going to unbox, well, unwrap. So here is my little package. So it is from Story Arts. Um, so if you don't know who Story Arts are, they pr they create bookish clothing. So I'll sh unpack it. So I, I do know what these are because I ordered them. Um, I should just mention that all of these unboxings that I've been doing recently, I am not sponsored by any of these people um, or paid in any way for any of these <laughs> unboxings. So they're all just entirely me and my opinions. So anyway, let's do the thing. They've sent me a little promotional postcard and some little bookmarks with their details on it. All right, so some writing gloves. Oh, these are my night circus ones. These are the night circus riding gloves. Awesome. So they're riding gloves because they leave your fingers free for writing and gripping pencils and typing, but then they're comfy. And as you can see, it's really just the writing on it. So let's see what it says. The circus arrived with that arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. No paper notices on downtown posts and billboards. No mention or advertisements in local newspapers and so on. <laughs> I love these. These are awesome. They're actually really comfortable and they're so cute. All right so that was the first lot. I got two sets of riding gloves. And these are the second lot. Oh, they're pink and green. How cute. I don't remember. Oh, it's me. It's Emma. I couldn't remember which books I ordered. Oh, I love these. I, oh, I don't know which one I like more. Ah, 
How cool are they? Oh my god. I love them. They're awesome. Oh, I don't know which ones I like more. <laughs> and my headband. I don't remember what the book was for that either. I think it's Pride and Prejudice. Yes, it is Pride and Prejudice. All right, I'm gonna take the glasses off for this. Haha! <laughs> I'm just looking in the viewfinder. I think they're probably better. It's probably better. If I put my hair up completely. Which I, again, need my glasses off. And I'll just adjust. It looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> so you can see. There we go. I don't know. Can someone comment and let me know if I'm putting this on correctly? It just feels, doesn't quite feel like it's supposed to, but you get the general gist. So that was my ridiculously giant unboxing for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment below and let me know what you thought of the unboxing. Have you read any of the books? If you have, what did you think of them? Please let me know about this headband. Am I doing this right? All of the information uh, and the websites for all of these things will be in the description below. So if you want to go and order anything um, from any of these places, then you can do so. And my social media details are listed below as well. So if you want to go and find me on Twitter or Instagram or check out my Goodreads, then please do that as well. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.